Hello everyone, welcome to another video in the series of Tableau CRM learning videos. When I started my Tableau CRM journey, I always wondered, should I use a data flow or should I use a recipe? In this video, I'm going to give you four things. First, a tour of the data flow. Second, a quick tour of the recipes. Third, we will do a comparison between data flow and the recipe. And fourth, I will tell you my tool of choice. So let's dive right in. So let's look at the data flows. In order to get to data flows, you have to be in the data manager app or section of your Tableau CRM. Instead of building a data flow from scratch, I'm going to pull up or use one of the existing data flows. So let's look at service analytics data flow. Okay. When you open the screen, you see several icons on top of the screen. These icons help you to create nodes that allow you to bring in data, to manipulate that data, to register that final data set that you will use to create your reports and dashboards. So uh, these nodes are the ones that will allow you to bring in your data set. Uh, this is augment node, which allows you to join your data set with another data set. These are some of your transformation nodes, for example, compute transformation, compute related transformation. Uh, this is your prediction node. If you have run, if you have your Einstein discovery model that allows you to predict something, you can use that prediction node uh, and so on. So let's take a quick look at an example. So let's look at this. So what is happening here? So if I click on this node, you click here, the name of this node is extract underscore opportunity. The source object, this is your Salesforce object, and we have selected opportunity as the object. This is the object from which, from where we are bringing in our data. And the fields that we are bringing in are ID, account ID, owner ID, name, and so on. Let's say if you want to bring in additional fields, you can click on select fields and you can select other fields, for example, age underscore C, auto number underscore C, billing city, and so on. Then, this is joining your opportunity with another data set. So let's see what it is joining with. So it says your left key, uh, left source is extract opportunity and your right source is extract record type. So it is joining your opportunity with this another data set called record types. Okay. Uh, when it is joining, it is always going to ask you for a key, correct? So when I go here, it says that the left key is a record type ID and the right key is the ID and the field that it wants to bring from your uh, right key, which is your record type is the name. So essentially once this runs, your data set will contain all the fields of the opportunity and it will contain the name of the record type. Okay. Let's look at the next node. This is the compute expression node. So the compute expression node allows you to create an additional dimension, a calculated dimension. So let's click on this and see what's going on. Uh, when I click on this, this says case when record type ID is null, then NA else record type dot name. So it is going row by row. It's looking at the record type ID. If the record type ID does not exist, meaning there is a null value or a missing value, this new column record type name is going to be marked with not applicable or n a. Otherwise, it's going to retain the record type dot name value. Okay. Then it does another augment or it does another join uh, with your account, right? So your left node is your account and your right node is the data set that we have, which is opportunity joined with your your record type, right? Uh, the ID here is on the account node. It is looking for account ID on the uh, on this one. It is looking at the ID that is your key and it's asking us to bring in the, the account ID, the name of the account as well as the industry. So as you can see, your data set, 
we are introducing more and more columns so we started with opportunities we brought an opportunity record type name and now we are joining it with account to finally bring in your id name and industry that belongs to the account now this is a complex data flow we are not going to go through this entire thing but as you can see you can do several transformation on your data set uh, to filter your data set to slice your data set uh, to finally create the the data that you will use to create your reports dashboards or your lenses uh, your final step after you do all the transformations filtering slicing of information your final step is always going to register your data set so let's look at this uh, if i click on register opportunity uh, you can you can give the name to of your register uh, and this is the name of your data set okay uh, we'll click on cancel now one question that you might have is this is a very complex data flow how do i even search for something so uh, one way to search for something is using this option and as you can see when i click on here it's giving me these these different options here uh, add fields to event join extract things like that so let's say if you want to look at register nodes i can just start typing here and it gives me all the register nodes that are available as part of this data flow so that's it this is your data flow uh, editor you will be in data flow a lot creating uh data sets for your reports and dashboards or you will be looking at recipes uh which also does this as well as some additional things so let's look at recipes now so let's look at a recipe we are in tableau crm and this is the screen where we start to build recipes and what i love about the screen is that it is extremely user friendly if i want to bring in a data set all i need to do is click on add input data let's bring in opportunities okay and when i do that this screen here tells me how many fields on this particular data set were selected so there are 75 fields 50 of them were selected and i can remove fields i can delete fields if i want to do that right if i want to add more fields all i have to do is just hit this check box and that additional field will be brought into my data set so let's click on next now i can click on these three dots i can edit the name i can also add a description about this particular node i can click on this particular node let's expand this and i can get the profile of a column so let's see okay now this has loaded let me let me click on is lost and click on this magnifying glass and it tells me we have a lot of opportunities 319 opportunities that we have not won and about 29 opportunities that are part of the data set that uh, are marked as one okay uh, again i can click on name i can see if there are any missing values we don't have any missing values on names and so on so it helps me to get a quick idea about my data set now if i click on the plus sign i get several options i can transform the data i can filter it aggregate it uh, do a prediction join append and output so if i click on transform it gives me the screen and it allows me to choose one of the formula that is available on the screen so for example i can uh i can drop columns if i think 50 columns is way too much information and i need to reduce the size of my data set to 20 columns that i know the user is always going to look at i can drop columns i can drop redundant columns uh in this as part of the step i can let's say go to the name it's a text field so i can run a run a sentiment analysis typically you would not run sentiment analysis on the opportunity name you would do it on a description field or something uh that has a uh, customer comments in there but let's assume we run sentiment analysis on this particular field uh 
we can understand the sentiment of a customer how is the customer feeling about this particular opportunity is it positive negative neutral and i have done an entire video on this one i'll paste the link in the description box so please feel free to check out it also gives me other functions such as time series again a video that we have done as part of the time, as part of the tableau crm learning videos clustering algorithm is is available we can bucket the 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 data and so on let me collapse this i click on this i can even filter the information now this is a very common use case in every organization you may have 10 20 years of data but in reality your users are probably looking at last two years of data or last three years of data so i can click on filter and i can say show me uh, all the opportunities that are greater than you know 2016 or 2017 uh, allowing you to show you last four years or five years of data right it also helps with the performance by the way if you're not pulling in all the data and doing computations on that one we have discovery predict we'll do an entire video on discovery predict we have an aggregate function aggregate function is right now you have one row for each record but let's say you wanted to aggregate that information so let's say you want to see sum of opportunity amount by year and month Uh, this is a great functionality to do that you can bring in the entire data set apply transformations apply aggregations uh, and you will have fewer rows that tells you how many opportunities are in in a, in a close stage uh, one stage loss stage or uh, you can aggregate the amount uh, that for, for an opportunity by year and month okay and then finally after you apply all the transformations uh, you can always output the data okay output the data is you are registering the final data set and that is a data set that you will use to create your reports and dashboards we also have couple of other functionalities this is something that you are going to use in every dashboard so join is where you are bringing another data set and joining that information with opportunity so for example right now we only have opportunities we don't know who created the opportunity the name of the person could be in a different table so i can bring in additional information or additional data set such as user uh let's, do, let's select one doesn't matter okay and i can simply drag and drop click on join and there you go right uh it will ask me what is the key of course last modified date and photo is not the correct key it should be owner id and id uh but this video is not about joining or appending information so this is your recipe we can do an entire series of video on recipes uh to me the biggest advantage with recipe is that i can get a quick preview of information uh and the user interface is extremely easy to use so here is a comparison of all the functionalities that dataflow and recipes have to offer uh as we saw recipe you can quickly get a preview of your data you can do column profiling you can see under column profiling you can see uh if there are columns that are missing values uh you can see distribution of values and so on the append functionality is available in data flow and in recipes you can bucket information in data flow and in recipes joining information is also available in data flow and recipes transformation uh compute transformation that we saw as part of data flow or creating a calculated dimension Uh, again available as part of data flows and recipe time series analysis sentiment analysis and clustering they are specific to recipes and update is only available in data flow so my tool of choice is recipes mainly because it is easy to use i can preview the data as we saw i can look at column profiles to see which columns are missing data i can also look at my transformation so after i apply transformations let's say i join two tables uh, i have created a calculated dimensions again i can preview that information to see if my transformations are working correctly that option is not available as part of the data flow editor 
uh, also in order to build transformations i can make use of the formula that exists in recipes in data flow you will have to write some code uh, in sql to create these transformations when the recipes you don't have to do that so again my tool of choice is recipes uh, look at it uh, explore the smart functionality such as time series clustering uh, and so on however if you are using update transformation that's where you will have to use data flow so look at the comparison but again the winner for me is recipes So I hope you enjoyed this video on data flows versus recipes. I am curious to understand which is your tool of choice. So comment below and tell me why you would choose data flow or recipes. Finally, this is a new channel that is dedicated to help you learn Salesforce and Tableau CRM, and my goal is to release one video every week. So please subscribe, comment, share, and if you want me to cover certain areas of Salesforce or analytics, please comment and let me know. Thank you. See you next week.